Welcome to Children's Touch E-Learning. Okay, hello children. Uh, it's time for praise and worship as all of you know. So I encourage all of you to get up from your seat, find some space in your house. And let's get ready to praise God. to be more like you and uh, children I just encourage all of you now to close your eyes and focus on God and raise up your praying hands and repeat this prayer after me dear Lord dear Lord thank you thank you that I can worship you today that I can worship you today I pray that I pray that I will become I will become more and more like you more and more like you in Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You 
are the potter. You are the potter. I am the clay. Change my heart
Let's thank God for that wonderful time of worship. Hello boys and girls, my name is Gokko Jason. For today's e-learning, we will continue to look at what happened to Paul in Acts 24 verses 1 to 23. Paul was moved to the court of Felix and was standing on trial there. From today's passage, we will learn about the importance of living a righteous life. What does it mean to be righteous? Well, pay close attention to the story and we will find out together. Order! Order in the court. I am Felix and I am the governor that judges this court. Bring the next case. Your Honour, my name is Joan. This is my neighbour, Tabitha, who is planting a seeds in the land that I bought. Please help me. No, I didn't do that. That is my land. She's lying, Judge. No, I'm not lying. It's my land. I bought it with my money. No, it's my land. No, it's my land. Lying. It's my land. Order. Order. As you know, it's my job to help to settle arguments between people and find out the truth. So, let me ask you this. Does either of you have the title deeds to this land? Hmm, well, I have this. This is the land deed from the person I bought the land from. It says that I bought the land and I'm the owner of this land. I have received proof this land does belong to Joel. Tabitha is not the owner of this land. I'm sorry, Joan. I actually took some of the land because I needed to plant more crops to feed my family. My uncle suddenly just moved in with us. Oh, that's why. You know what? I can share a part of the land with you so that both of us can use it. Thank you, thank you. Case closed. Bring the next case of Paul. Governor Felix, thank you for overseeing this trial. You have brought us peace with your fair and good judgment and we must thank you for it. You are welcome. It's my job to be fair and look at all the proof before making the right judgment. The court is where people come to find fair and right judgment for their cases. And we have come for your fair judgment of Paul, who is the leader of the cult of Jesus. He has been stirring up trouble within the Jews and he's been trying to make the temple of God unclean when we arrested him. Order! Order! I see. I will now hear what Paul has to say. So, my name is Paul and I know that you have been a wise and fair judge for the Jews for many, many years. So please, listen to my side of the story. I arrived in Jerusalem 12 days ago, and no one, no one saw me arguing in the temple, in the synagogue, or even in the streets in town. These people accusing me have no proof that I did anything wrong. I see. Continue. Yes. And I followed the teachings uh, and the Son of God, Jesus, but my accusers call him a cult. Actually, that's not true. I worship the same God as all these people and I try to do the right things to honour God and his people. To show honour to God, I came back to Jerusalem so that I can offer sacrifices and perform a purification ritual. Look, let me show you the proof that I'm doing all these things and that I mean no harm to anybody. I even shave bald. I even shave bald because this is part of the purification ritual. So this shows that I didn't stir up any trouble at all. And it was the Jews who accused me at the temple and they should be here to say something if they have anything to say against me. Your Honour, I have done nothing wrong. Hmm, there is no proof that Paul has done wrong. I will decide at a later date what will happen to him. God dismiss. Thank you, Judge. Wow, children, did you see that? 
the Jewish leaders were trying to accuse Paul of causing trouble among the Jews in front of Governor Felix. But Felix did not think that Paul was guilty because Paul lived righteously. Hmm, but what does being righteous mean? Well, children, to be righteous means that we obey God's word and do what is right to God and men. Paul did not do the bad things that the Jewish leaders were accusing him of, and he even shaved his head to show that he obeyed God's laws. His actions showed that he was living in righteousness. Because of that, Felix believed that Paul was righteous and sent his accusers away. In the same way, our actions show if we are living righteously. We show others that we follow Jesus, not only through our words, but also through our actions. The way that we behave is a testimony for other people to see that we are living right before God. Now, I would like to tell you a little story about a boy who cried wolf. Once upon a time, there was a shepherd boy who looked after his sheep in a little village. The shepherd boy spent all day with his sheep in the field, and he was very bored with no one to talk to. He thought of ways to have fun and trick the villagers. He thought to himself, If I tell everyone a wolf is here, they will run over to help me, and I will have people to talk to. So, he stood up in the field and shouted loudly, Wolf! Wolf! The villagers heard the shepherd boy and rushed over to help him. But when they got there, they found the shepherd boy rolling on the field and laughing at how he tricked them. A few days later, the shepherd boy did this again. Wolf! Wolf! he shouted. When the villagers ran over and found out that they had been tricked again, they were upset with the shepherd boy. One evening, as the sun was starting to set, a big hungry wolf appeared from the forest. Shocked, the shepherd boy jumped up and ran towards the village, shouting, Wolf! Wolf! The villagers said to each other, The shepherd boy must be trying to trick us again. No one ran over this time to help him, and sadly, the shepherd boy lost one of his sheep. So you see, children, if the shepherd boy did not try to trick the villagers, they would have helped him, and he wouldn't have lost a sheep to the wolf. This is also true in our lives. When we live righteously and do the right thing, people will believe what we say. Our actions are a testimony for God. Wow, thanks to Sir Song Ling. That was such an interesting story, right? Now I know why it's so important for us to be righteous. Not only do we please God by being righteous, but also our actions will be remembered by the people around us. Hmm, by having said that, how do I know what's the right thing to do? Well, one thing we must do is read what the Bible tells us. John 3 verse 20 to 21 says this, Everyone who does evil hates the light. He will not come to the light because it will show the evil things that he has done. But he who follows the true way comes to the light. Then the light will show the things that he has done were done through God. So what does that mean? It means that if you are doing the right thing, you won't mind even if the whole world knows about it. On the other hand, if you are doing the wrong thing, if you are doing something that's evil, you'll be scared all the time because you're always worried. What if someone finds out what I'm doing? So if you don't know what to do, you can try this special test. It's called the sunlight test. And it's very, very simple. Before you do anything, you just need to ask yourself this question. What would I do if my actions would end up on the newspaper tomorrow morning? Uh, so what would I do if whatever I do now just ends up on the news? Well, in other words, we are asking ourselves, how would you feel if everyone knew what you were doing? Let's see how this test works. <sighs> oh my gosh, children. Today has been such a long day. And I have so much homework to complete. I have English, math, science, and even Chinese homework left to do it. That's so much. And I really don't feel like doing it. Oh, it's a message from my classmate. Oh my gosh, Nadia. 
there's so much homework today. Why don't we each do half of it and then share our answers? It's okay as long as we don't tell anyone. If we each do half the work, I won't have to do so much. Anyway, it's the teacher's fault for giving us so much to do. But then again, right? Is this considered cheating? I know we're supposed to do it by ourselves, but technically we're still doing some of it, right? Just not everything. Wow, I don't know what to do eh. I don't know what's the right thing. Uh, what did they teach us in children's church again? Before you do anything, you just need to ask yourself this question. What would I do if my actions would end up on the newspaper tomorrow morning? Maybe I can try doing the sunlight test. Let's see. Hmm, what would happen if everyone knew that we shared and copied our answers? Breaking news. Today, two students from Living Century Primary School were found sharing and copying their school homework answers. The school has expressed their disappointment and is considering penalty for them. Let's go over to our reporter on the ground for more information. Thank you, Patrick. We huh? found out that a pair of students on? from Living Sanctuary Primary School have been caught cheating with him. Do you see the, the news? Everybody now, found out that we were copying our homework. Oh my gosh, what are we yeah. going to do? I just saw the news. Why are you going to copy your friend's answers, ah? You know that this homework is supposed to be done by yourself, right? Ah yeah, all this time I always tell you, just do your own work. How come you always like to go and copy here, copy there? Oh, oh my gosh. I guess I shouldn't copy answers after all. Hmm, maybe I should do something else instead. Like, text Mr. Tan, my math teacher, and ask him if I can do the homework tomorrow instead. Dear Mr. Tan, Today, we got a lot of homework from our other teachers too and it is too much for us to finish it in one day. Can we do it tomorrow instead? Sincerely, Nadia. And said. Hmm? Oh, he already replied. Let's see what he says. Dear Nadia, I didn't know that you all had so much work from other classes. Thank you for telling me. I will tell the class that the homework only needs to be submitted next week. Happy studying. That's great! Now I don't have too much to do, and I also won't be doing anything wrong. God always provides a way. On to our next news. LSBC Children Church has just held two online camps over the last two weekends. The camps went well, and the children got ready to go and live as children of God. We thank God for the fun and meaningful time online. Here's our last breaking news. Children who watch this video and complete the online worksheet either during Zoom class or on their own will be awarded with 400. I mean, sorry, sorry, I mean four gift shop stands. This is new caster Patrick. Thank you and have a blessed week.